Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. Well, you're sitting here and you're saying, well, what in the world was that? And it's a wig stand. Hang in there and I'm going to show you how I made it. Before I do, I'm going to talk a little bit about something. I don't normally talk very much, but I, I know I don't like to watch videos that have a lot of talk in them, so I try not to do it. But anyway, I'll make it short and sweet. Uh, last week, or maybe a week before, I went to the local Wood Turners Club meeting. I used to be a member of it, oh, about maybe three years ago. And I got out because, uh, you know, it didn't offer me anything, and it was, it was run by a bunch of old guys that uh, ran it like a dynasty, you know, and uh, they weren't open to suggestions and stuff like that. So I, I got out. I didn't see it did anything for me. So I uh, have a good friend that belongs to it, and he last couple, three times, he's been inviting me to go back. He says, it's really changed, Larry. They voted out the old crew, and they got a whole new crew, and they got bylaws and stuff like that. So I said, okay. So I went last uh, Thursday week, I think it was now, and he was right. It was very, very pleasant, uh, very cordial. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to rejoin. Uh, one thing, the reason I did this is that uh, they had a, a club deal going where they built wig stands for the local CARTI, uh, you know, cancer hospital. And uh, when I first walked in, I had this table set up, and you know, I asked somebody, I said, what is that, a bunch of mushrooms? And they said, no, those are wig stands. So anyway, I thought I'd build one, build mine different than they do theirs. There was just three pieces. I wanted to build a single group piece. So, you know, like I said before, hang in there. We'll show you how I did this thing. Excuse me. Got the heat. All right, this is, uh, this is a piece of white oak I got out back. I've got a got a big pile of it. I was trying to find something small enough because I didn't want to take a very big piece and end up turning it down to something like that for what I need. So I found this now. I wish it was just a little bit bigger. Now it's a little bit on the wet side, uh, not because it's green, because it's been cut like three years but because of the weather and sitting out in the rain. I, I used to cover them with tarps until one day I moved my tarp and there was a Big old copperhead looking at me. So I don't cover it with tarps anymore. And I sent him to Snake Heaven. Um, I don't normally kill anything, but venomous snakes, I don't need them. venomous snakes around here with my grandkids and stuff. So anyway, here's, uh, here's the deal. The uh, best way I found to find center is to, to use one of these templates here. And, you know, you can just eyeball it and get it in there. And then, you know, punch a hole and uh, this one works out real good for four inches. I was hoping to get five, but it doesn't look like I'm going to make it. I think four will be enough. If it's not, then we'll do something different. So anyway, that's the way I find center. I find it to be uh, a whole lot faster and really more accurate. Now I'm going to, I'm going to turn this between centers. So I'm, I'm going to use this the way I always use. I'll t uh, I'm on, the biggest end is going to be the top of the stand, and the small will be the base. This looks like it can really be pretty. It's got quite a bit of spalting in it. I really don't know how much punk is going to have in it until I you know, get it down where I do. What I always do is I, is I take uh, the one end with the drive center, and I use a one-inch forester bit, and I drill me a hole with about half of this right here. There you go. And uh, what that does for you is that, that captures this in here so that you know if something does happen, it's not it's not going to fly out on you. And I take the other end, except I use a uh, these are called step drills. They're uh, mainly for drilling holes like an aluminum and stuff. Uh, aircraft, you know, they make a real neat hole. You can just you know, step it down to whatever size. This one goes all the way up to three eighths. So anyway, on the other end, 
I put me, I make this little, I make this bigger. Okay, okay, the purpose there is so that the pipe center fits down into a hole, whichever, whichever one I decide. to the lathe and put this on and I'm going to turn it around. It doesn't look like it's going to be good. I'll seal the ends and set it aside and what I'm thinking about doing is cutting up a pallet and laminating some of those oak boards together. That usually turns out really pretty. Well I always like to throw a little uh, how-to in my videos and I noticed when I was cutting that log for, for this video that uh, this wasn't really cutting as good as it ought to. I had to push too hard. And that's how you get hurt, you know, like a, a, a dull knife will hurt you more than a sharp knife will because you'll, you'll struggle and then something to give and you'll get in trouble. So you're better off to have your stuff really sharp. So anyway, this is a two TPI, two teeth per inch, uh, probably, uh, you know, somewhere between a two and a four. You can sharpen this way anything more than that and you know the teeth would be too close together. Be hard to do. So the first thing I do, and I make sure it's off and everything naturally, uh, is I find the weld or, or just, just a starting point. Because it's 131 inches, it takes a while to get around it. And you sure don't want to have to go around it twice. And then I bring it down here to, you know, wear gloves. I bring it down here somewhere about in this neighborhood. And I'll put a clamp on it right here just to hold it in place. And then I take a Dremel with a you know, small grinding stone. Turn it about halfway. I like so. And I just come in here like this. The only one sharp in the back side. So forth. You want to be careful and not roll around. Uh, you know, don't roll around it, you'll dull it. Might be better to even come in at this angle here. So let's check that out and see what it feels like. Compared to some I hadn't sharpened already, here's some I sharpened down here. Yeah, definitely a difference right there. Okay, there you go. Another how to, my way. Not necessarily the right way, but it's my way. So let's see if we can get this thing put on here. Even with the precautions that I take. Uh, by doing this and this, I, I still, when I first spin it up, I like to uh, stand side a little bit. You just never know. All right, that looks like it'll work. Well, I've got me a new little toy since last time I did a video. Here it is, it's a four inch uh, angle cutter. And I bought one of these carving blades because my grandson was, he was wanting to carve something, you know. So, you know, I was telling him about these. This basically has a piece of chainsaw around there. And uh, I, bought, I bought this, it's, it's relatively cheap. I think it was like $70. Um, because I only use a Roby, Ryobi rather. I have one other one, that Black & Decker, which I love, but I have several of these tools, so that way I buy batteries and I can just, you know, put them, exchange them from one to the other. So anyway, what this is, is uh, you don't want to come in here and take something like this off. Okay? Well, my, uh, my locking mechanism doesn't work. That 
That just makes, you know, life a little easier. I'm going to just clean it up now and see what it looks like. It looks like it might be too punky for this. I, I may end up having to go laminate me some wood. There's going to be a couple day delay on that one. Pretty. I'm not going to finish this down here until the end because I don't want to remove my pocket for the drive center until I have to. And not right in here and here. That's what's bouncing me. But that's all right. I'm debating as to what I want to do here. I think I, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and, and CA and fill those. Wormholes can weaken your wood if you're not careful. surface because I'm going to wheel it down a little bit more. Okay. If you got a crack, put it in first so it can go down to the bottom and sort of lay in the bottom of your crack and hopefully keep it from cracking anymore. I'm going to use this, this old uh, carbide tool. I made this a long time ago. It's been so much stress. You can see it's got a, a bow down there. The reason I want to use it is because I can get in here a little better with it. Probably not going to go too deep. I'm going to try to get some of this out of here. So let's see what happens.
That, my friends, is a little harder than I thought it would be. And not enough room there. About this one, maybe. It's a little smaller cutter. Yeah, I can maybe do a little better with this one. Let's see what we got here. Worse in here than I thought it was. Bad right in there. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna use corn. Remember that last one I did? I did corn. I don't know why not. I got lots of it. Now what this does, hopefully, fills in all those finer little places. They will sand off relatively easy tomorrow. Well, it's the next morning. But well, I thought for sure it cracked last night, but it didn't have a single crack in it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a little uh, 120, just sort of knock it down a little bit, and then I'm going to come back with some 320. Then I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to sand the bottom and the top, and uh, I think I'm going I'm to stain it with some Jacobean. Jacobean, I guess. I don't know how to see if I just... Jackal bean, I guess, jackal bean, whatever. Anyway, it's like a dark oak with a little bit of black in it. My wife likes dark dark wood, so that's what we're going to do. Now let's pour that up and see what's going to happen here. Looks like it's still pretty straight, too.
you don't have to pardon the noise of this thing. Not much you can do about it. Just finishing up with a little 320. It's pretty dang smooth already. Let's just do a little bit here. Not a whole lot you can do about this in here. Uh, you know, I could try to get in there and sand it, but that'd be hard to do. And my fingers don't like getting in places like that. So that's really going to be pretty like it is, but I, th I think the stain will make it look a whole lot better. That cedar really works well. I mean, this is uh, this is really smooth now. Just a little bit of uh, openness of green up here in the top, but all this is nice and smooth. I'm not sure that putting that corn in there was such a good idea, but oh well. Not going to take it out, that's for sure. So I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to take it off. I'm going to, I'm going to sand the top and the bottom. And I'll, I'll get the uh, latex gloves and get over here and do a little staining and wiping. But that dried real good. And then I'm going to put... Uh, depends on what it looks like. i got a plan for the top. Hadn't mentioned this before, but they tell me that wig stands are... Well, I don't know how to explain it. In other words, there's two types of wigs. There's natural hair wigs and there's synthetic hair wigs. And uh, natural hair wigs are fine on, with wood on, on them. You know, wig, uh, wig on wood. But they say don't put synthetic uh, wigs on there because the wood and the synthetic, they don't like each other. So, you know, I don't understand the logic of that. I mean, it's well sealed. I don't see what difference it would make. But... You know, I'm going to I'm going to make some standoffs up here. That will make it when you put the wig on, it'll stand off a little bit to let the air flow under. Just in case, because I'd hate for one of my wise wigs to end up smelling like uh, white oak. I don't think she'd appreciate that. So anyway, let me do that, and I'll come back. Well, that's what it looks like before I start. I uh, took some three gauge dowel pins and drilled all these holes here and I used a uh, medium CA and I put them in there and sanded them down put a little brass disc right here to cover where that drive was and uh, I haven't, you know, put my signature in the bottom sort of looks like a mushroom, doesn't it? mushroom, a porcupine mushroom anyway, my wife doesn't like uh, light wood so we're going to make it into dark wood use this jacket bean uh, stain Let's see what this is going to look like. Almost black. Soaks right in, as you can see. So, neatly wipe it off. Give you an idea. So, where do we start? Let's just start down the side here. All right, I'm done with it. Here it is. It uh, didn't turn out as nice as I wish it did. I, I really picked this about the sorriest piece of wood I had out there. So, But you know me, once I start, I don't quit no matter how sorry it is. Now, uh, you see all these little pegs? Somebody told me, I think it was at that last wood turner meeting, that uh, they didn't, you couldn't use uh, wooden wig stands on synthetic wigs. And for the life of me, I, I wouldn't, I didn't know why other than I figured out that, well, it had something to do with moisture that they wouldn't breathe. Uh, some of the guys over there, they made them with wire bales sort of on them, and uh, I, that was what it was for. And of course, the ladies, uh, they, they, they wash their uh, wigs, and then they want a place for them to dry, and naturally they can't be up against wood, if, you know, no matter how well you, you think you've got it sealed. So, you know, that's the reason I, I did this, put them up here so they get a little air under. Uh, this, this is uh, white oak, stained white oak. It was really sort of rotten crap. Uh, I guess all my white oak probably like that now. It's been out there so long in the weather. Uh, not a real pretty wood, not a real ugly wood. I liked it better when it was light before I stained it, but my wife, she likes dark wood, so I made it dark. So. This is an old wig she gave me to try it out. Uh, it doesn't look good on me, so I decided I'd put it here. So there you go. That's, that's the way it is. The way it fits right there. Nothing to it. 
So, if you enjoyed my video, subscribe, give me a like, tell your friends, and above all, call your mama. Hey, one more thing before I get out of here. I went to uh, a ton of websites that sold uh, wooden wig stands, and not a single one of them addressed the question of synthetic wood, synthetic wood, synthetic wigs or synthetic hair on wooden wigs. So, you know, I would think if all these people are selling them and there's an issue there, at least at least one or two of them would have would have mentioned it. So. I'm not so sure I'd put a whole lot of credence in that. You know, I'm not using synthetic wigs on them. I think possibly you want to make sure your wig isn't wet. I know during the summer these wigs are hot, so I'm told, and you know, you can get sweaty, so I wouldn't put them on there then. You know, they would have some moisture in them. That'd be the only time, other than that, you know, I wouldn't have a problem even if it didn't have the pegs. So, try it again, see you.